had a website, but it wasn't, it was just, it was almost like a vanity project back then. Now it is like an entrance fee to have a business. Good. Hey, I wanted to let you know that the Google guarantee, the Google ads, man, I'm getting 12 to 16 calls a week. My goal is at least do 10 to 15 more years, grow it up, sell it for 40, 50 million, maybe more. Today is January 27th, 2023, and my guest is John Olson. John is the owner and founder of J&J &J Power Washing, a top power washing company in Illinois. The company is one of the top performing power washing companies I've ever seen, with, as of this recording, 229 Google reviews and a 5.0 star rating. Firstly, congratulations on the success to this point. And secondly, John, welcome to Titan Talks. Thanks, man. I, I appreciate it. First question, I want to start with how you got here. Let's go back all the way back. How'd you get started as a, a power washer? Maybe you could offer an origin story. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm not. I'm not often used to talking about talking about my own self here. I've got so many kids and the wife and everything that uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm always catering to them, which is a good thing. But um, but yeah. So you know, just I wanted to kind of start out by saying, like, you know, I've got a colorful past, and um, it doesn't define who I am, but but it definitely has has brought me to this moment and makes me has given me the drive. I can't talk about now without talking about then. You know, so I just wanted to say that up front that um, it doesn't make who I am at all, but it is, but it has given me the, I don't know what it is, the determination, I guess, to do what I'm doing, you know, so, and to be successful at it because um, there is no other option, <laughs> I guess. There was no plan B. If I was going to talk to somebody about starting a business, um, you know, for, for years, I, I grew up in a upper middle class neighborhood and um, I didn't have, I always worked, you know, I've been working since whatever, 12 years old, I was mopping the floors at a convenient mart and stuff like that. And then worked at McDonald's at 14 with a work permit. A anyways, what I'm saying is I've always been broke. And not only was I broke, but then I fell prone to alcoholism and hardcore drug addiction. You know, by the time I was 14, I was snorting cocaine. And by the time I was 16, I was completely strung out on heroin. And by the time I was 17, I was looking at three to seven years in prison. And, um, and that carried on into my, to my um, early 30s, late 20s, um, in and out of 30 different institutions. And from the time I was 12 years old, on and off the streets, uh, being homeless and uh, living in abandoned um, cars and vans on, on the, in the ghettos in Chicago. And, you know, had gone through all kinds of stuff, you know, guns put to my head. Um, over 54 of my friends are dead. Um, and, um, and so what I'm trying to say is that I spent a lot of time in my car um, pursuing drugs and going to Chicago and all kinds of stuff. And I often got to look at what I considered normal everyday people. And, um, and I just always wanted what they had and I could never figure out how to do it. I just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't, I just couldn't figure out how to be somewhat successful. Why I said all that was, is because I, I tried to start four different painting companies before I started this company. Wow. So, yeah, you know, and a lot of people, and I'm guilty of this too, but, um, a lot of people see the end result, you know, and, and I've had some of my friends who I tried to get help get sober and they would always say, Oh, I want what you got. I want what you have. You have a home and a, two cars and kids and you know, health and all of this kind of stuff. And, and, but that's not the beginning, you know, the beginning is the beginning is, is hard. I guess what I'm saying is I got to this point by failing a bunch I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. And then I made it. And then now I made it, you know? So if there's anybody listening, this is the fifth company I started, <laughs> you know? So 
I don't know how many will listen. We don't have stats on that yet, but I assure you many of the people who will are thinking about starting companies, whether it's yeah. their first or their third or their ninth. And, and I hope that that's uh, a story of inspiration for them. So it sounds like you didn't always want to well, you, you didn't always want to be a power washer. There were uh, attempts to be a painter, maybe attempts at, at other things. When when did it click for you that that power washing was going to be the the the, the path to success? Yeah, I know the day it clicked, but it it was so. It, it's not. It's not like yeah, it clicked like one day. I was like, okay, this is what we're doing, you know. And I came home to my wife. I threw the cash on the table and I said. This is what we're doing. This is the name of our company. This is where we're going to do from now on. But, you know, for 20 years prior to that, I've been watching. I've been, I've been working for painters. I've been working for painting companies. I've been watching the bosses. I watch how they interact with people. And I, I constantly thought to myself, I can do what they're doing. I can do that. You know, it's, I can do it. I knew I could do it. It just, it just was a matter of starting it, getting your name out there and doing all that other kind of stuff but I knew I could do it. But for 20 years, I've been watching, I've been watching, I've been waiting and I've been looking, you know, for opportunities. I had some specific things, you know, I, I, I kind of wanted to work by myself. I didn't want to have a lot of employees. If, if that, if, if my company grew enough to where I needed a bunch of employees, I would be okay with that. But I wanted to be able to sustain my family um, with an income without having to depend on employees right away. So, um, so yeah, like I said, I was a painter and uh, I was painting, I was painting the exterior of this guy's house. And like I said, I was always looking and I was always waiting and I was, the wheels were always spinning about how I was I going to get to this next level? Cause I was stuck. I was stuck making a thousand dollars to $1,500 a week working, you know, 10 hour days for the last 20 years, you know, and I was stuck and I, I didn't like it. You know, I'm a very free spirit and and I'm a smart person. I'm just not smart when it comes to, you know, I don't have, I don't have the college education and all that kind of stuff, but I knew I was, I knew I was intelligent. And so if I could just start a company, I knew that I could do it. You know, I just needed, I felt like I needed help. I was always waiting for somebody to come and tap me on the shoulder and say, Hey, I, you'd be great for this company. You know, and it just, you know, I, I, at some point, you know, I, I think I was 35 or 36. At some point you realize that that's not going to come. You know, and that dad isn't going to come and help me and mom isn't going to come and help me. And there's nobody that's going to come and help me. And so anyways, all I'm saying is I used to power wash homes before I would paint them. So in my life, I view every person that I come in contact with as a teacher. So people can either teach me one of two things. They can either teach me what I don't want to do or what I do want to do. And so I, every person I come in contact with, I can get something from. And so I pull something from everybody. And, um, and um, so I started a painting company, my fourth painting company, and I put gutter cleaning on the end of it. So it was J&J &J painting and gutter cleaning. Oh. I had that. Yeah. Now I, now I got that advice from my cousin who said, hey, Jay, to trust me, put gutter cleaning on the end of your name. And I knew nothing about it, but I was willing to try anything. So I said, sure. So. Anyways, I was painting on my fourth company, still broke, still struggling, still didn't know how I was going to make anything out of anything, especially with the, the seven felonies I had, or I don't even know how many I had, and no education and all that kind of stuff. I had no idea how I was going to make this work. And um, so anyway, so I'm at a house, I'm painting it, it's outside. He asked me, he says, could you power wash it? I said, sure. So I, I used to, you know, I charge a certain amount to power wash. And I got, got it done in uh, four hours. And then the neighbor that same day said, hey, can you clean my gutters? And I said, sure. I don't even know what to charge him. But I was like, uh, 150. And he goes, 125. I said, sure. So between the power washing and the gutter cleaning, I made more. I made, you know, $550. And I made that in about four hours. Painting, it, would, it normally took me at least two days to make that. And I made it in four hours. So yeah. that was it. That was it. I was right there, right then and there. I said, okay, this is what we're going to do, you know. So that was day one. Tell me a little bit about day 50, day 100. Did, did you have to go through training or did you teach yourself? What, what was it like? So one of the things I've learned um, as I've gotten sober is that um, 
you know, or once I had a clear head that um, I was able to, um, I learned through watching. So I learned through video. I don't, I can't read. I'm a, I'm a, a shitty reader. You know, the only thing I read is Proverbs and that's, that's it, you know, that's and those are short. Right. You know, and I read the good book, you know, so, but, but, um, but, but, um, so yeah, so I learned through video and, um, and I'm a hands-on type of person. And so, so I started learning through the videos. Um, what I'm trying to say is, is I, I, um, I watched videos to learn and I realized, I realized that I learned that way because I first approached my focus when I was painting, I watched YouTube to, to figure out how to change my diet. Cause I was overweight. I was like 250. You know, this is when I was boozing hard, tons of cocaine, heroin, girls, everything. I mean, it was just off the charts. I just realized that I couldn't protect my children. If I need, I couldn't run a quarter mile. You know, and, and this is once I got sober. So anyways, I started watching YouTube and I learned a shit ton about diet and health and exercise. And I did that for like 18 months. Um, so I learned that I'm a visual learner through YouTube. And so when it was time to do the power washing, I went right to YouTube. I always remain, I try to remain teachable to what's around me. And, and I try to let my, put my ego aside. And, and that's how I've gotten ahead in life. You know, that's how I've become successful is, is by listening to the people around me and by taking little things from every person. And when I mean surround myself, I, I could subscribe to a few people on YouTube that, I, that, I, that are my mentors, you know. Who you know. would you say has been the biggest influence on your work? Can you single out one or two people? As far as YouTubers, um, yeah, there's definitely like three or four guys um, that I used to listen to, um, I'm trying to think of their names. I don't know if I could think of them right now, but they're the biggest house washing guys out there. Okay. You know, so if you go on YouTube and you go to house washing and, um, I think one of them was big Jason. Um, I'm trying to think he's the king of power washing or something like that. Um, there's a few other guys, a guy named Nick. But anyways, that's who I learned everything from. And I sat in front of YouTube for about two or three weeks for about six to eight hours a day. I got up at like four or five in the morning and I just took notes and, and I, I built my whole trailer. Nobody taught me. I don't go to any school. I don't do any of that stuff. And, um, and I built my whole trailer. Realistically, when it all came down to it, it probably cost me between eight and $10,000. Um, I put a lot of that maybe on credit cards in the beginning. I don't remember. I didn't have nothing. I didn't have anything. I had determination. And I had a family I needed to provide for, and I had hope for the future. And I was sick of where I was at. I was fucking sick of it. I couldn't take it anymore. And I'm sure there's other people that feel that way, but I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. You know, I want to. I want to run the show. I want to be in charge. I well, want to make the calls. You let's know. Get, let's get into what? your business today. How many employees do you have working with you? How many jobs on the schedule? Let's hear about. Uh, what you got going on today? Okay. When I go to buy something, what do I look for? Right. First thing I look for is reviews. Okay. Se second thing I look for is good online presence in multiple places. Right. Yeah. And then, yep. uh, the, the and then the third, you, yeah. Right. If the there's not a review, for, if there's not a review, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying. Right. That's right. right. And if there's 10 reviews, I'm still probably out. You know, you need, <laughs> you need a lot because I know how it goes. Right. I'm from You're the streets, good. dude. So what I've done and, and the website, the website has to be good in that. It's where you guys came in. You know I mean? The website is, a, it, it's the best one out. I mean, it's the best website that I've seen hands down. And I go through all my competitors. I look at their websites and everything. So, what I'm trying to say is that I don't have any employees, man. All right. Now I use, I use one guy. Now I'll use a guy, you know, when I need one, the, the amount of work that I have keeps me busy four to six hours a day, five days a week. And it brings up enough money for, so I can sustain my family. And I, and I assume that I have, as time goes on, my business has grown year over year over year. So my goal is to have another truck with another guy, but I'm not going to push that, push that. I'm not going to force that. I'm just going to do the next right thing today. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be honest. 
and I'm going to admit when I make mistakes and, and I'm going to let the cards fall how they will. I've got jobs already booked in March and I've got all of my next November of this year. I've got 70 jobs booked, right? But how did I learn that? I yeah, learned let's, that. Let's dig into, yeah. let's dig into that. So what I, sure. I want to hear, what are the most important metrics for your business? I'm just curious if you keep track of things like, you know, number of customers that you have today versus uh, last year, oh, yeah. number, number of Google reviews, maybe that you have today, yeah. versus, stuff like that, that you keep track of and want, and want yeah. to see climbing. Yeah. So I keep track of all that, right? I keep track of my Google reviews, my Facebook reviews. Um, and um, I keep, a, I keep, a, I keep all my own books. I'm my own accountant, you know, and then I, I go to a, an accountant once a year, but I keep all my books, all my write-offs, all that stuff. Um, and uh, I keep all my client lists on my phone. And then, you know, every year I, I just track it mentally. You know, I know where I'm at. I've got about, excuse me, I've got about 1200 customers on my phone with their emails and their um, phone numbers and their addresses and um, their first and last name. Um, even the customers that don't, I don't provide a service for, if they call me, I take all their information. Uh, your guys' website uh, really helps with that too uh, because I get all their information. It's super important. Uh, but yeah, so all those are important to me and I try to build on all of those every year and we're growing every year. So I keep all of my clients information. It's super important because then what we do is I send out a mass email twice a year wow. and, uh, you know, say we're getting ready for the season. So that's one way we acquire people. Okay. We keep all their information. And then, you know, like me, probably like you, I don't like getting hit with, with, uh, an email a week or a text message a week or all that crap. I email my customers. Now, like I said, I'm still learning, you know, and, uh, but I email my, my customers twice a year. That's it. Just a, a little reminder, a picture of the family. How are you doing? It's that time of the season again. Reach out to us if you'd like to do an appointment. The other three ways, or four ways, I should say now, is yard signs. I'm, every customer gets a yard sign. Every one of them. And the yard signs that I do, they're simple, right? I keep everything simple. I provide three services. Gutter cleaning, house washing, dryer vent cleaning, and gutter guards. Okay, I provide four services, and I um, on my yard sign it says two things. It says uh, J and J house washing, gutter cleaning, phone number. That's it. You know, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah, yep. boom. And everybody gets a sign. You know, I ask every customer, and then I say, and I've learned all this from listening to other people. So uh, none of this, none of the things that, that I come up with are, are original. You know, and uh, and what I ask the customer is, hey, would you mind if I put a yard sign in your yard? You could throw it away at the next garbage day. You know? Each yard sign costs me eight dollars and fifty cents. So and then the other way that we get customers is Facebook advertising, Google advertising. And um, and then we do uh, the free advertising on Facebook. My wife does that two or three times a week on all the what's happenings. We're in about 30 what's happenings. We post on all of them systematically. So that's how we bring customers in. And then, and then another thing I do, I text somebody when I'm on my way to their house and then I show up at that time. And then when I go to their house, I'm polite. I explain everything. And then I, I realize that their dollar that they're giving me is just as important as my dollar that I give to somebody else. So even if I pull up to a half a million dollar house, their dollar is just as valuable to them as my dollar is to me. That's great. That's really great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd, I'd love to hear, let's say you win the project of your dreams, right? <laughs> some, some, some great big customer sees one of these, these yard signs as a huge house, you know, huge project. They give you a call, John, I need your help. I'd love to hear about your process. How do you get prepared for the job? Uh, walk me through what steps you take to ensure the highest possible quality finish. What do you do? Okay. So to me, I guess when you're saying that, I'm thinking of like, you know, a 20 building uh, apartment complex or something like that. Those are always pretty high paying jobs, pretty profitable. You know, they're a pain in the ass, but hey, you get, you know, whatever. So what I do is I break things down by, um, by how many days it's going to take me. Um, and then I break that down into obviously, you know, money that I want to make. 
And then I always figure what, if I get this job, I want to be happy when I'm driving to it. So this is the number and I'm only willing to go down to this much. So I already know all that stuff before I present everything. And then um, uh, what else do I do to get prepared? You know, the cost and everything, again, to me comes, you know, I don't know what it is with people sometimes. Oh, well, business, business. I'm honest. I tell people up front, this is what it is. This is why it's that much. I just, I lay it on the table, you know, and that's it. And honestly, a lot of people seem to respect that. People aren't stupid. They know when you're bullshitting them. I mean, it's just people aren't stupid. There's so many scammers these days. I said in the beginning, I think we have a lot of pros out there who are thinking about starting their own business. Maybe thinking about, you know, should I jump in? Should I not? Who are listening to this, hearing, hearing what you have to say, thinking about it. What advice would you offer to the pros just starting out or just thinking about starting a business? I can tell you my experience. So you just, you just want to think realistic, you know, what, what do you want? You know, um, you know, you got to just be honest with yourself. Do I want to climb ladders? You know, do you want to, if you want to start a house washing business, are you okay with getting covered with bleach all the time? You know, do you want to work on a trailer? Do you want to work and clean gutters? I mean, nobody wants to do it. That's why I stay in business. There's not a lot of gutter cleaning jobs. You know, can I save enough money to get through the winter? If you're going to start a house washing business, you better be able to save to get through the winter. And I got to tell you guys, I have to personally save $30,000 to get through three months. So that's reality, you know, and a lot of a lot of power washing companies, I believe, don't succeed because they can't figure out how to get through the winter. So if you want to succeed, you got to do what everybody else isn't doing. And what everybody else isn't doing is they're not saving to get through the winter. So, you know, I don't know. You know, so I mean, there's, yeah, I take all of that, you know, I take all of that and then I, I put it in a daily practice. Like, there's going to be a lot of roadblocks and there's probably going to be a lot of failures. This is my fifth company I started. Fifth. So failure is the path to success. It just is. And I never knew that. When I pictured being successful, I pictured making a decision, going to do it, being successful. A, B, C. And it's just not the case. But most people give up. So the thing, what I'm trying to say is I have to be willing to do what most people won't do. And if, as soon as you can figure that out, then you'll be successful. That was really powerful. Thanks for sharing that, John. Um, we've, we've heard a, a little bit about your, your past and, and then the business, uh, as it stands today, I'm wondering about the next five or 10 years, where do you see J and J power wash going? Where do you see, uh, your life headed? Yeah. So that's a funny question. <laughs> um, if you're asking me where I think I'll be in 10 years, honestly, I mean, I would like to think that uh, we'll be in uh, maybe another house in Tennessee is kind of what I feel like maybe we're heading towards, but um, that could be 20 years from now. And I also think that um, I can see that I'll have one, one guy in a truck doing most of my work while I schedule and I do some of the easier jobs, you yeah. know, and whether that might be my children you know, cause I got five kids, three of them are my step boys, you know, will it be them? Um, I don't know, you know, but, um, that's also why I do the investing and stuff. And that's also why I study, um, the stocks because I feel like, um, I feel like that's part of what I need to do to get me to those dreams that God gave me. And even though I failed, I failed, you know, when we first started with the with crypto, I, I turned to 30,000 into 200,000. And then I, from that 200,000, I lost it. I, I lost it, all of it. it, 18 months from there, I lost all of it, you know, and it was so hard to deal with. So, but anyways, with my company, what I see is uh, to me, I feel like the turtle wins the race because I've seen other companies try to get too big, too quick. They get in too much debt. They don't want to do any of the work. Their ego gets in the way. They don't listen to anybody around them and they end up broke and in debt and working for somebody else, all because they wouldn't listen to the people around them and they thought they knew it all. And 
they get all these big business loans and they're the boss and the, this and that. And so, turtle wins the race. The turtle. That's wins. right. There's a lot of noise out there in the world. You know, I'm an open book and I am who I am. I'm not ashamed of who I am anymore. And so, um, you know, I'm just saying I'm 100% being honest about everything, you know. Well, John, thank you so much for taking the time for coming on Titan Talks and sharing your story. It's an inspiration to me to hear your story. And so I thank you for sharing it. And I know all of our listeners are going to really, really enjoy this one. So thank you. Sure, man. I really appreciate you.